this year the focus has been calisthenics and with that comes volume lots and lots and lots of volume i've done days where i've done a thousand push-ups in a day i've done days where i've done a thousand uh squats bodyweight squats in a day um, i've done something like four five hundred dips in one day uh and each time i've come in i could squat you know damn near you know 180 something around that almost unaffected even when i did the thousand squats in the day you know i could get the weight up uh didn't feel like my legs were a limiting factor even after a thousand freaking body weight squats that got me thinking and that thinking got really interesting to me and the other day i did 400 or something like this sit-ups 400 sit-ups I did. This is the first time I've done sit-ups in all of the, you know, all of the push for uh, calisthenics, all of the push for the volume. It's the first time I've done sit-ups. That day I came in after only 400 sit-ups and 140 felt heavy as. It felt very, very heavy. My instability through the pelvis, through the lower back. I felt like I just had no stability, no strength. I just could not exhibit any power. Isn't that interesting? I've done a thousand bodyweight squats, didn't affect the squat, the one rep max, training max squat. Then I do 400 sit-ups and my squatting goes to shit. So what is that telling me? What is that telling us? This is similar to when people go to the leg press machine and put on three, 400 kilos, very impressive leg pressing, but they can't squat three plates in a barbell squat ATG. So we can conclude there that the problem is not leg strength. It's not leg strength. It can't be leg strength because if it was leg strength, after a thousand push-ups, I will be very, very affected. Sorry, after a thousand squats, I'll be very, very affected. But I wasn't. I was affected mostly by the sit-ups. Absolutely murdered me. <sighs> this is where I always get, you know, I get conflicted. I get confused, I go back and forth, and I feel like my, my head is going to explode. I feel like I am a severe schizophrenic, unable to stay on course, unable to stay on one train of thought for long periods of time because I dwell on these things and I look at it from different perspectives. And this image, this puzzle, seems like it's different from different vantage points. So at one point, I'm like, oh yeah, definitely leg strength. You know, the way my, my squatting pattern is, uh, my, my leg strength off the floor in the deadlift, uh, how strong I am in RDLs, how strong I am in the deadlift compared to the squat, like all these different things rolled up, my long femurs, my general comfort when I am bent over versus fully upright. You know, I feel very, very insecure when I'm doing Hindu squats. Anything upright, feel really weak. But then the squat, the front squat, in the last year, I put on 20 kilos on it. So what is going on here? Like I, I get so confused. How can I do a thousand freaking bodyweight squats, come in and hit 180? And then after doing 400 sit-ups, I come in and I am a wreck. Like I, everything feels off. I can't hit depth. I can't stabilize my lower back. And on top of all of this, the most interesting to me is, is that in, so yesterday and today, I've had doms in my lower back from sit-ups. Now, I've heard every man and their dog talk about how bad sit-ups are for your lower back. It causes lower back pain. Now, what is the relationship between a sit-up and lower back pain? What is a sit-up? People think it's the rectus abdominis contracting, making you flex your torso up. It's not. It's not. That is the wrong mechanism that you're thinking of. The hip flexes flex you. Those are the primary moves in a sit-up. What are the hip flexes? You've got a couple, ilio, iliacus, the psoas. So psoas is like this wonder muscle uh, that people don't even know where it is. But basically, it's your main, you know, the iliacus and the psoas get put together, bunched up, and, and they, they get called iliopsoas. These are like deep hip flexes. Those two guys teamed up, and then you've got the rectus femoris, which is like this quad muscle, which is biarticulate. So it goes from, it crosses the knee joint and crosses the hip joint. These three guys essentially hip flex. There are other guys, like I think the TFL is also involved and blah, 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 blah. Some adductors also, you know, uh, get involved or whatever. But these are like, you know, assistance guys. So when you are doing a sit-up, you are using the ilio, ili, iliacus, uh, iliopsoas, and the rectus femoris. 
And the reason why people get that sensation of back pain, back doms, or, or whatever, injury, or whatever the case might be, is because the psoas originates from T12 to L5. If you look at the, if you Google the vertebra of your body, you'll see it's like a fan muscle. Each vertebra gets a piece of the psoas, it's like a, like a fan, right? And then it originates, it, it, it inserts into the uh, proximal femur, which is the femur right at the hip, right? That's what it is. So when you are doing this, you are working out the iliacus and the psoas and the rectus femoris. Now, you also get some domes through the abs, right? Abs, which are the rectus abdominis and, you know, that's kind of, you know, the external, internal obliques, that kind of stuff. The reason why that is, is because if it wasn't for the abs, contracting the psoas completely would make your upper body fall backwards. It would make you have a lordosis, hyperlordosis, because when you contract the two points, the, the, the proximal femur and the, and the lower back, you would have this arching. So pre- to, to, for us to prevent the arching, we need to flex the rectus abdominis to have like that uh, hollow body kind of position. That's what's happening. So it's a secondary effect that we're training the six-back muscles. It's not the primary effect of a sit-up. But the fact that I did 400 sit-ups, I went over to squat, and I can't squat for shit. Absolutely for shit. Like I said, 1,000 squats, no problem. 400 sit-ups, wheelchair. Absolutely demolished. So I can't even get, it's going to take me a long, long, long time for me to get to 1,000 sit-ups. I'm horrible at it. Like it took me 12 hours to get to 400 sit-ups. I was horrible. I did 30 down, and it was shocking. 30 almost like took my breath away. So I have a real, real weakness when it comes to my anterior core. Now, yes, I hear you and I hear myself. I feel like sticking my head through a brick wall when I think about all this. The quads, 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 quads. That's a flavor for the year, Van. Quads, 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 quads. I've been killing my quads and the squats are unaffected. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. I don't know what that is. What, what the hell is that? How can you go to a thousand freaking squats and still somewhat hit a, a, a you know, decent number. <sighs> yes, okay, the quads were fatigued. I still got the weight up, man. But when the core is fatigued, nothing is happening. Forget about the legs, forget about everything. It's kind of like doing the leg press. You can do the leg press without the core. Where is your core? Where is your core when it comes to the barbell squat? How many guys you know in the gym who can, like, all, they still all the plates in the leg press. Yeah, okay, they do quarter squats on them, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But they, you know, make him squat. They can't squat two plates. What is the missing link? What is the missing link? It's the core. Plain and simple. Uh, so, that's another piece to my madness. I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days. It's just churning away in my mind about the core thing. You know, a lot of guys will say, man, that's too many sit-ups. And what are you doing? you got to strengthen the core. you got to do dead bugs, all this sort of stuff. Man, like, if you can do a thousand sit-ups, you've got a pretty strong core. You know, whatever, you know, we can, you know, argue about this until the cows come home, whether a thousand reps do, does anything for strength or not. In my experience, if you add some sort of strength to some sort of range, you are getting strong. You're not going to get weaker, man. Absolutely not. And if you think about what the core is, it's a stability muscle. It's a core integrity muscle. So if you're doing a thousand of something and you're making that thing hold tension throughout the whole thousand reps, you are training your core. It's no different to dead bugs. You're just literally stabilizing your core. Um, anyway, I'm about to get ready to go to work. I've, I've been doing push-ups this morning, uh, trying to cram it in. I'm, I've got a late shift today, so I can't, you know, I can't dedicate the whole day to, to push-ups. So I'll go, to, I'll go to work now. Come back at 10 p.m. and I'll try and do a few more sets. And you know, it's not going to be a thousand today. No way. Um, but that's been on my mind. You know, I, I've, I've been feeling all right. You know, uh, last few days, but the day that I did the sit-ups, man, I was horribly, horribly weak, and I wrote a, a fair, nice little blurb in the book, which I'll refer back to in the future. Definitely, it's really, really interesting. Anyway, that's what's on my mind today, guys. I appreciate all of the Patreons, all of the support in, in the last few weeks has been unbelievable. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.